Hello, welcome back to Learn Physics. In today's topic, we are continuing with the gravitation chapter. Okay, so till last last class we learned till our mass and weight. Now next next we are going to consider about the fluid pressure. So the pressure acting on the fluid. Okay, how the pressure will be acting on the fluid? The so fluid is, has many particles. Those particles will be applying on a force on the other object which is coming towards it or between the particles also it will be between the molecules also a small pressure will be there. Fluid has some pressure that we know. So first we are easy to consider as uh, the liquid. Uh, so I am first considering the liquid. So fluid means it consists of liquids and gases. Liquids and gases are there in the fluid. Okay. So fluid pressure. What will be the pressure acting on the fluid? So I am considering a liquid. See it is here inside this. That's it. So if we are keeping our hand inside, we are without, have, without applying any uh, force, that is free hand or we are not giving any uh, force to this, usually we will be, while we are keeping the hand like this, we will be unknowingly, we will apply some force. But if we are keeping our hand loose inside the fluid, inside a bucket of fluid, we can, or inside a bucket of liquid, we can, we can feel that some pressure is acting on our hand like that we can feel isn't it so that one we are feeling the same way any solid object if we are keeping it inside that that will experience a pressure okay here i am keeping a ball inside this okay so the force will be acting in all these all the directions but here the force will be acting in the upward direction so to resist this force, some force is acting from this direction, isn't it? So the total pressure, fluid pressure inside will be less here. Now we are releasing the ball and it is coming to the bottom, bottom surface it is reaching. What will happen? No upward force is acting in this direction because it is here at the bottom. Isn't it? So the, all the pressure will be acting in this direction. So to resist that force, no other objects are here. No other liquids are here at the bottom. Isn't it? It's bottom level. Pressure will be more. Because here and on, here also the body, the object weight is same only. But here to resist the up, downward force, some upward forces are there. So it won't be that much of pressure. So as we go deep into the uh, fluid or deep into the liquid, if the liquid pressure is more, so liquid is acting all the pressure on this object, isn't it? So the liquid pressure is more. So as we go deep into the fluid, what will happen? Pressure will be more. More pressure will be there. So that is the reason in dams and all. While we are constructing the dams and all, the uh, bottom portion will be well concreted. It will be concrete. Will be more over there. It will be let's see because the fluid pressure will be more at the bottom surface. So in this bottom surface, it will be very thick thick concrete they should give at the bottom surface in order to prevent the fluid pressure. Fluid pressure will be more at the bottom surface. Okay, so clear. So how the uh, fluid is applying pressure here. Okay, so at the bottom surface uh, fluid pressure will be more. Okay, and if the if a pressure if we are applying a pressure on the fluid, the that pressure will be equally distributed in all direction. Pressure will be equally distributed in all directions in a fluid. 
in a fluid the pressure will be equally distributed in all directions so that means if i am applying a pressure over here if i am applying some pressure over here that pressure will be see one pascal pressure i am applying that one pascal will be here also here also here also everywhere equally distributed among all the in all directions this is the law this law is called as pascal's law okay this law is called as pascal's law pascal's law states that pressure in a fluid is distributed equally among all the direction that is called a pressure this pascal's law okay so if we are applying a small pressure in one direction of the fluid then it will be one uh, one side or one at a particular unit area while we are applying a pressure it will be distributed equally in all the directions okay clear so and this force here how we know it, it's an upward force i told here isn't it an upward force will be acting on the object in all the uh, objects inside the fluid isn't it so that upward force acting is called a buoyant force or buoyant force or up thrust the thrust is acting upward direction so the upward force which is acting on the object the upward perpendicular force acting on the object is known as the up thrust or it is the buoyant force so the upward force acting on the object is called as inside the fluid if the ob uh, object is inside the fluid the upward force acting on the object is known as a buoyant force or a thrust okay so the up thrust depend on which and all factors okay so if the number of it depends on the number of particles per unit volume okay that is mass per unit volume okay so here we are going to study this, uh, this uh, term maybe you would have studied in small classes also next we are going to consider about the density density what is meant by density of an object or density of a fluid that is equal to mass per unit volume this is called the density density is the mass per unit volume density equals mass per unit volume okay so that is kilogram per meter cube okay unit is kilogram per meter cube so if the density of the particle is of the fluid is more buoyant force will be more that is more particle in a unit volume number of particles are more so mass of the particles are more if the mass of the particles is more in a unit volume what will happen more pressure will be acting more force will be acting on the object isn't it so as density increases as density is more buoyant force also will be more buoyant force acting on the object also will be more if density is less buoyant force will be less next we are going to study about when the object will be sinking in a fluid or when the object will be floating in on a uh, fluid okay so here i am considering a beaker containing liquid okay i'm keeping a cork here we know on water this is water this is a cork cork will be floating listen that now i'm considering the same amount of water and i'm keeping a stone here what will happen stone will be sinking okay now i am taking another one one more object it just immersed inside the water what will be the reason for these three cases here if weight of object is less than 
the weight of water or less than the up thrust up thrust of water is more than the weight of object then we can say it will float okay so all the forces acting upwards towards this object listen it from here also it is acting upwards so if weight is acting downwards this up thrust is acting upwards so if the weight is less weight of the object is less than the up thrust of water then it can hold isn't it so while we are carrying an ob uh, object if we can carry an object somebody is putting some object on our hand if we can't carry we will do like this isn't it it will go down but if we are able to uh, carry that one that is the force which we can give us uh, is balancing with the force of the object which is on our hand then we can carry like this isn't it next is here then what would be the case if weight of object is more than the up thrust it will come down or weight of water here weight of water also we can see here weight of object is equal to weight of or up thrust then it will just immersed inside the liquid okay and it depends on density also okay so the density of water is more than the density of the cork that means whose density is more it will be sinking it will come down okay here density of cork is less than the density of water that is the reason it is floating here density of stone is more than the density of water here density of object is equal to density of water that's why it is just immersed inside the liquid understood these three cases now relating this we can study about a uh, one important principle is there that is archimedes principle next we are going to study about the archimedes principle archimedes principle archimedes principle what is man what is this archimedes principle how we can state this if an object is completely or partially immersed in a liquid fluid then the upward force acting on the object is equal to the weight of fluid displaced in it i'll tell you once more if an object is partially or completely immersed in a fluid partially or completely immersed in a fluid then the upward force acting by the fluid will be equal to the weight of fluid displaced in it upward force is equal to the weight of fluid displaced in it so if an object is if an object is completely immersed in a liquid in a fluid what will happen you see the water level or the fluid level will increase if an object is coming going inside that what will happen the fluid level will rise isn't it so this the upward force which will be equal to the weight of fluid displaced in it 
okay the displaced weight of fluid so an object is partially or completely immersed in a fluid then the upward force acting on it is equal to the weight of fluid displaced in it this is called a archimedes principle archimedes only this law of rotation and all he found out okay so understood clear so the way the an object is completely or partially immersed in a fluid which will be equal to the upward force acting on the object will be equal to the weight of fluid immersed in it okay clear so this is archimedes principle this archimedes principle is used in lactometer that is to find out the mm, purity of milk and in designing ships while designing ships and all ship design and all depending on the density of the fluid because density is small we know the lumps of iron if i am taking it will go inside the ocean isn't it but while we are considering the uh, ship it won't go inside what is the reason its volume is, uh, is its volume will be more isn't it mass by volume while we are taking considering density of the if the uh, ship is floating what what is the meaning of that density of the ship is less than density of water isn't it that is the reason density is the, here volume will be more so it will be density will be less okay so that is the reason so in designing the ships or in hydrometer hydrometer is used to find out the density of a fluid or density of an object so that is uh, hydrometer in all those cases we are aware. so in lactometer in lactometer hydrometer 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 used to find out the density lactometer used to find out the purity of milk and designing ships in all those cases we are using archimedes principle okay now only one small portion of the thought that is relative density what is meant by relative density it is the ratio of density of a substance to the density of water okay density of substance divided by density of water that is called as relative density so relative density is defined as the ratio of density of substance to the density of water okay so what is uh, the unit of density unit of relative density it has no unit it has no unit okay relate density of substance divided by density of water as relative density and it has no unit and this density of water is 1 uh, 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube usually it will give in the data if it is not given also you can write down 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube okay so understood all those things I'm winding up for today. I hope all of you understood all those things. And if you like the channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye.